A lot of people look for garlic. Look for garlic because we hear about all the benefits. And really garlic is something that when people say about superfoods that I don't really like that term. Well, garlic, it could be a superfood because it's something that has a lot of different variety of properties. It's something very easy to consume, very easy to find, very easy to apply. It's delicious. So for me, it could be a superfood. But really, what are the benefits of garlic? Is it true? All of what people say. So let's go and let's dig deeper talking about garlic so we can really know which are those benefits and which aren't. So when we start talking about the benefits of garlic, we see that garlic is very good as an antibacterial, but it's also good for viruses. So it's, it's an antiviral food because some of the compounds that we're going to mention just in a moment. It is also very good for heart health and the benefits in all the papers that come every single year showing all the benefits for heart health are very, very interesting. It also has antioxidant properties. Remember that what we need in the in the body is to have an equilibrium in the amount of free radicals and the amount of antioxidants. So when we consume garlic, garlic has a very interesting amount of antioxidants that it's going to fight all those free radicals and it's going to help us bring back that balance. Garlic also has anti-inflammatory properties. Some of the compounds found in garlic and there are some preparations that I'm going to mention at the end of this video are very useful for fighting chronic inflammation or even for fighting acute inflammation. There are some studies showing that garlic aids or, a or works as a complement for the treatment of cancer. It's not going to prevent cancer, it's not going to be the only treatment for cancer, but it could be beneficial for some patients as a part of the complete treatment they're receiving for cancer. Some people also use it for digestive issues. When people have overgrowth of bacteria in, in their intestine or, or what it's called SIBO, garlic has also been shown to regulate or to control blood sugar. Some people also have described the properties in some papers for asthma to reduce the inflammation or the allergic reaction. And there is also some interest of garlic in bone health. But really, when we try to go deeper, when we dig in, we go and look what's really inside garlic, because these are the properties that the literature tells us. But what's really so interesting about garlic? And let's follow this video until the end, because at the end, I'm going to show you and I'm going to tell you which is the best way that you need to consume garlic, because not always you're going to use it well. And you can be using it in a wrong way. So let's wait until the end. So the first compound that it's probably the most important compound inside of garlic, it's called allicin. Allicin, it's a sulfur compound that it's formed when garlic is crushed or when it's chopped. Allicin comes like in little compartments inside of garlic. As you see, let's figure, well, let's ha have in our mind that when we see garlic, it's like in little divided into little compounds, each of the, of the parts that we get when we open it. But inside of each of that, those little like garlic beans that we have, each of them, they have little compartments also inside in which allicin is contained. When we chop garlic, all of the allicin is liberated. So that's something you need to remember. Allicin is probably the most important compound for most of the properties that I just told you. This sulfur compound is responsible for the antibacterial properties, the antiviral properties, the antiparasitic properties, the part of the cancer treatment, all the benefits with bone health, all the benefits with blood sugar, all the benefits for heart health. Everything is related with this sulfur compounds. Also, we're going to find in garlic something called S. Allyl cysteine. S allyl cysteine. It's a compound derived from allicin and it's found also in a preparation that it's very interesting and, and I'm going to be talking about it that it's called aged garlic extract. This is probably the best way 
then you can find garlic when taken as a supplement. Also, there are other antioxidants such as flavonoids, but also garlic is very interesting because we're going to find vitamins and minerals. Vitamins such as vitamin C and vitamin B6 and also minerals such as selenium and manganese, which are very important for well-being. There are other antioxidants that are liberated when garlic is crushed, such as polysulfides. Again, as in allicin, it, they need to be liberated or free from that part inside of garlic. And there is one other compound that it's, has been shown and that people are talking about it for the anti-cancer properties that is called the ally disulfide so which is the best way to consume garlic so the best way if you really want to keep this is to consume it raw to consume it raw but chopped crushed uh cut it in different directions so you do a really good chopping it could be cooked but it should be lightly cooked when you overcook garlic all of the allicin goes away for black garlic the way it's cooked, it's completely different. And apparently the amount of sulfide compounds in black garlic could be higher because of the way that it's cooked. There is still some controversy around it. It tastes very different, but when you cook garlic slightly, you can do a cook that it, it, it could be maybe for more time, but not very high temperature. You could also look for garlic supplements. When you go for garlic supplements, there is people that just take garlic, they put it in a powder, such as the condiments that you get in the supermarket, and they put it in capsules. When you look for that, you could be losing your money because the best way to consume garlic as a supplement, I just told you before, is called aged garlic extract, A-G-E. This part is something that there are a lot of different companies. I usually use a company that it's from Japan, but there are different companies that make aged garlic extract. And this is probably the best way that you can be consuming garlic if you want to consume it as a supplement. You could also use garlic oil. Garlic oil sometimes, again, depends on the way that it's made. If they put garlic in a very high temperature, then it's going to lose all of its properties. If they do it, as a part of something where garlic is pressed or expeller pressed, it conserves all of its properties. Or where they put crushed garlic into olive oil, in that way you could have maybe in smaller amounts, but you're diluting these compounds inside of the oil and then you're applying it in your food and you can have some of the properties. Of course, you're going to have it also with all of the things that cause the odor and can that cause the breath and the smell of garlic. So people say that which is the best dose? The best dose, it's something very controversial. When people go for aged garlic extract, they say that the best dose is to consume more than one gram per day. When you consume more than one gram, you're getting a therapeutic uh, dosage. If you want to consume it less than that, you're not doing something therapeutic. Maybe you can do it you're doing something for your well-being, for prevention, but you're not doing anything as something therapeutic. But different from aged garlic extract, there is no really like a consensus saying which is the best dose. Some people say that you need to consume something in between three to five grams of natural raw garlic in your diet in order to have a therapeutic effect. So what could be the side effects and who should be maybe minding about the consumption of garlic? The side effects go probably for digestive issues because they could cause gastritis for a lot of people. Garlic, onions, peppers, to a lot of people they cause digestive symptoms, especially gastritis and reflux. So if you have any of these conditions, you should be mindful about the consumption of garlic. Also, they could leave you body odor or they could give you garlic breath. They could also give you an allergic reaction. Some people are, of course, they are allergic. To some people, if they consume very high amounts of garlic, they could have blood thinning. When you consume, if you're taking any blood thinner, any medication that is a blood thinner, you need to be aware of this because this can increase the time for the medication to act in your body and then you could end up with a bleeding that you don't want to. As garlic is very useful for decreasing blood sugar levels, 
you should be aware of this. If you have any condition related with blood sugar, you should be aware, of course, it's something beneficial, but you don't want it to lower too much because then you can have some symptoms of a hypoglycemia and you just have to know that this could happen and just be aware of their reaction. Also, when women are breastfeeding, they should be aware of this because breastfeeding, if they consume high amounts of garlic, it can cause the baby to be bloated and to have a lot of colic and a lot of GI symptoms. And this is something that is very, very common. And I really encourage my patients not to take any garlic, any onions or any peppers at all during the time that they are breastfeeding. What are you gonna do about the garlic breath? You need to remember something. Garlic, it's not just when you end up in your mouth, you're going to have body odor. We all have been around people that consume high amounts of garlic and you can smell the garlic around them because it's going, all of this sulfur compounds, they go in the blood and they're also eliminating this through their lungs, through their breath. So it's not something that you need to eat or just by brushing your teeth. You're eliminating this compound through your breath. It happens the same as with alcohol. It's not in your stomach. It's something you're eliminating the other day through your breath. So what can you do? You could chew parsley. You could chew mint leaves. You could chew cardamom. Cardamom is very, very good. But again, garlic is something that is, for me, it's very useful. I really encourage my patients to use it as something that they put in their diet on a regular basis. And please remember before you leave, just to hit the like button, please remember also to subscribe. It really helps us to build this community and also to hit the bell. So every time that we make a new video, you're going to be the first person to be notified. Thank you until next time.